we know in remote areas, NGOs can have a pretty tough time delivering products to the people that need them the most, and getting financing in some of those untested markets can also be pretty difficult. Greg Van Kirk is a co-founder of Community Enterprise Solutions, also developer of the micro-consignment model that aims to tackle these problems. Thanks for coming. No, thanks for having me. Uh, we, we all know what microfinance is, but micro-consignment, how does this model work? The, the premise is a bit different. Uh, with microfinance, obviously, and what people would traditionally think of as microcredit, the, the essential issue is access to capital. Mm -hmm. With, with microconsignment, uh, the issue is that people living primarily in remote, isolated villages mm -hmm. in the developing world don't have access to things, uh, to essential products and services, such as um, eyeglasses or water purification buckets, things that have a positive economic health and, and ideally environmental impact. And traditionally, the only way that they've gotten those things has been through donations. So there isn't, there isn't anybody out selling these types of things. So through typical microcredit, if you were simply to give a loan, um, you know, number one, it's not a going concern. So there's a very high level of uncertainty. But more importantly, there's no local distributor to yeah. be for where they can purchase it from. So, uh, so essentially what we do is to, uh, is to serve the role of that distributor, so to speak. But more importantly, to identify women entrepreneurs and train them and equip so them. So focusing on women. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the women primarily are the purchasers for the home. Uh, and as well, what we found is they tend to be the ones who are the, the most successful entrepreneurs at going out to communities and offering these types of things. One thing that donations would do are microfinance, mainly donations first, you're giving the product to someone. Exactly. Now, you'll, you'd argue that's not always sustainable, and it's not. It, it's only there when the donations come in and when they're properly distributed. Your model focuses on selling items to people. Does that help the most impoverished people? Um, I think it's, a, in many regards, it's a timing issue, mm -hmm. and it's a geographical issue. Um, you know, giving of things, you know, we term as traditional relief work, uh, is obviously very effective and very important in environments like uh, we, see, we see Haiti right now. Uh, people are struggling for survival. Um, they, they need instant support to help them uh, get by food, clothing, shelter, what have you. We move along the spectrum and we look at empowering individuals. That's where uh, an, an entrepreneurial pro approach uh, seems to be the most effective because essentially what we want to do is we don't want to be handing things to people continuously. It's not sustainable. We, we simply want to teach people and equip people how to deal with this themselves and have it grow over time. We're doing this to drive ourselves out of business. And uh, a successful development work uh, is, is making yourself uh, unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Looking at the vendors that you work with to get whatever the product is to the communities, how do you choose the vendors you work with? How difficult is it to, to actually get the products in the right hands to distribute them? In terms of identification, it's, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive uh, that, you know, one would think that if you put the word out, everybody's going to come in and look for a job. Uh, but A, that doesn't happen oftentimes, and B, that's not necessarily the type of individual that we're looking to work with. Earning an income for the women is, is, is obviously a, a priority. Um, oftentimes they do it more because they want to support their own community. So we talk to local nonprofit groups, we talk to local Peace Corps volunteers, to people that we know within our network, and ask them to identify, and then we start a training process that takes a few months. Some of the products that are being marketed to people in these communities, they've never seen before. Yeah. They don't know why they might need them. Exactly. So how do you go about marketing them? It's the women entrepreneurs who do all of the work. What they do is they'll, they'll work in, in teams of two, mm -hmm. and they go to uh, a village, say on a, on, a, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and the first thing they do is talk to local leadership. They talk to the local mayor, the local pastor, the local priest, the local association, and present their offering, present what they're doing, and try to get a gauge up front is, is this something that's needed in the community? Right. Um, then to the extent that there is a need, uh, they then ask for the, the community's buy-in, they ask for the leadership buy-in to help do advertising and get the word out. Uh, and then they'll arrive again for their village campaign on, say, a Saturday and set up their table and have their shirts and all of that. So they use a variety of ways. They use megaphones, they use posters, the leadership, what have you, any way to get the word out. Thanks a lot, Greg. Sounds like great work.